Three years ago we met some early adopters of multi-species swords. They had just gotten started with a couple of acres the previous summer and were kind of learning on the job. So today we're going to catch up with them and see how they've gotten on over the last few years, what they've learned about multi-species and how it's benefited them. It's been really obvious over the last 10 to 15 years when we started out, a group would visit and you'd be inquiring about multi-species swords and nobody in the group was trying them. In fact at the time it was quite a success to have people with clover in their swords and it's just amazing to see how that's changed over time. Clover has become widely accepted and most of the groups that we see now, you know, the, there's, there's a substantial proportion of the farmers would be either trying multi-species swords and now more and more they're seeing it as an integral part of their system. It's a great way of keeping in touch with the successes but also the problems that individual farmers may be facing and there's still a need for good knowledge transfer about how to best get the success out of multi-species swords in terms of the selection of species, the proportions to sow them in, the sowing conditions and getting that weed management right. Over the years one of the curious things is that when we ask people how are you getting on and if there's problems and you talk to people very often the multi-species have been tried out on one of the worst fields in the farm. So it's often had a, a tough position in which to, to impress upon the farmer but uh, over time, I think, uh, more, as more and more farmers have tried it, we're seeing fairer and fairer comparisons. And there's a lot of success stories out there. Spring calving, our calving around 500 cows, and we're trying to get out the grass as early as possible. To lower the nitrogen demand was the big thing. The cost of fertilizer at the time was very high. And started looking for most species over maybe some drought resistant crops as well, just to help we we'll get a drought during the summer like. Here we would have done a full reseed so it would have been ploughed, power harrowed, sowed. We would have sown some of it just by disking and so on and there was no real difference between the two of them really. Probably slightly better establishment with the plough turning up the soil that way but not a whole big difference like in it. So we've converted to organics I suppose is the first thing. We were certified since May 23 so we started conversion in May 21. It was kind of on the back of we were able to grow grass multi-species without fertiliser. So we're cutting down fertiliser since 18, since the drought. So about 70% of the farm is now in multi-species at this stage. We're very happy with the way it's growing. When it goes in first, after the first, maybe first and second graze, and after that we'd be in 17, 18 days, uh, you're back in because you want your grasses and clovers to creep and go out in under where the herbs are, because the herbs are kind of a freestanding plant, and you want the uh, grasses and clovers to spread out over the ground, and therefore that'll help with your weed burden as well. We literally don't sow multi-species anymore without peas, oats and barley. We do a whole crop off it. Just the paddocks are much cleaner after that. They're just much cleaner with the competition from just a amount of different stuff on top. This one has a few docks through it. This is the field we're in three, four years ago. And that's my own fault, just management. Don't pop a fence on a Sunday morning and go off for the day when it starts raining. They absolutely ploughed it. It rained for the whole day and I was gone away for the day. It just let too much light down. If I had to know this was going to happen, I probably would have been in over sowed a bit just to get competition back in the sward. Chicory and plantain are still there, not to the same extent, but they're still there. I'm happy enough with the retention of the herbs. But they're after doing their job at this stage, so they're after aerating, and there's a massive hit of clover here, so I'm happy with the clover content as well. As regards grazing, I treat it the exact same as a normal grass sward. Don't do anything different. Keep the rotation lengths based on the time of year. Going in at probably 12, 1300 covers and the cows are grazing it down to 100. As regards fertilizer, probably putting about 40 units on in the springtime. And then between June and July, we're probably going with maybe 10 units in two applications. And it's grown, we're averaging 12 and a half, 13 tonne across the whole farm. And uh, mixed species is matching that. We were 40 to 50,000 a year on fertilizer. So the fertilizer bill is just, it's not there now. We're still able to grow grass for cows. We've no issue growing grass for cows. It's either multi-species or high clover swords. So the clover is the backbone of like even in the multi-species, it's still the backbone of the nitrogen fixing end of it. The fertilizer savings are just they're huge. What we're at saving on fertilizer over the last few years. We saved with the organics. We're three. This is our third year. Um, with conversion this is our third year. So it's a five-year contract. We'll see after the five years, but I imagine we'll stay with it. Usually in the summer here, we dry up. Like in 18, the cows just stayed in the shed for six weeks. They were only come up to look at scenery. There was nothing to look at. Towards summer 22, it was real dry the end of June into July, and farmers around us were all feeding silage, and we were cutting silage because we had multi-species. We had a growth rate of 120 on some of the multi-species in a week, like. It was huge growth. So since we put this in, we're not getting nearly as nearly bad as affected with a uh, drought. Now you will see the grasses do burn up a bit, but it's not, they're still plenty of feed there for cows. Definitely during the drought, it wasn't last year, it was the year before. That was the first year we had mixed species and it was probably the only thing growing on the farm. So we had 
40, 50 acres of it that year. Uh, sorry, we didn't have 200. <laughs> so it definitely helps for that. You know, the roots that are penetrating down into the ground, finding the water, which is a big help. Like I know some people say 50 50, but I wouldn't have a problem with going with, with that or more. Like, would it so more? Yes, it's be part of all receding going forward. Um, and as I said, if the chicory land plantain lasts for the three, four, five years, I'm happy with that. It's after doing its job.